Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and welcome to Mobile Radio Installation DC Power Sources Part 1. This Part 1 is going to be a general overview and safety consideration. The DC Power Sources is not just limited to installation of two-way radio equipment into a vehicle or a vessel. It could also be used to install any other 12-volt DC negative ground accessory electronics. We'll begin by discussing a typical automotive electrical system here. And most modern automobiles run on 12-volt DC negative ground. And the typical automotive electrical system has an electrochemical and electromechanical aspect to it. The electrochemical portion, which is the battery, which is a start battery, uh, generally has a charge of 12 to 13 volts. The alternator, or the electromechanical side of your automotive electrical system, is active when the vehicle is running and the alternator is being turned, and it typically has a voltage output of 13 to 15 volts. Now, color coding of most high current and accessory wires in a 12 volt DC system are red and black. Red indicates the positive side of the electrical system and black indicates a negative or ground side of the electrical system. I've drawn a very simple schematic of an automotive electrical system here. You can see in the center is your battery, which is your heart of your system. This side is your start side of your starter motor and starter relay. The opposite side is your charging system, which is your alternator. And then you can see your distribution system here, which powers all the other aspects of the vehicle. Some of the terms that you may be familiar with that we're going to use in this video are the term source, which is going to represent battery positive, load, which is your equipment, ground, battery negative, constant, which is hooked to the battery without provision for disconnect, which basically means is something that's hardwired to the battery or connected to the battery, and there's no way to disconnect that through a switch or relay. And then switched, which is referencing a hook to the battery with a provision for disconnect, whether that be a switch or a relay. A soft install, which is a temporary or field expedient installation. And a hard install, which is a permanent installation. And the term bus, which is a central connection point, and usually this is used when referring to a ground bus. Now we're going to talk about hard installs. This is actually where you're going to physically permanently install radio equipment in your vehicle and hooking it to your DC power source in said vehicle. And the first thing we're going to discuss is safety. Safety is paramount and you always want to ensure that everything is installed using the best practices possible. And some of the highlights here are fuses. Uh, a master fuse, other fuses, Fuses should always be sized for your load and as close to the source as possible. The importance of having proper circuit protection cannot be overemphasized, and this is something that you really can't skip on. And it's your responsibility to size your fuse for the load. When you select a fuse for your device, so let's say that you have a radio that draws 15 amps of current on high power on transmit. Uh, in that case, generally a 20 amp fuse is selected for that because it, it has enough wiggle room in it to where when you do use it for a prolonged transmission period and it's drawing 15 amps across a 15 amp fuse, there is a possibility that that fuse would fail in service. Whereas if there was a, a problem where it developed a short circuit, then that current would exceed the rating of the fuse and blow. Now it's important to remember that fuses typically are not meant to protect the equipment as much as they're meant to protect the vehicle and the wiring from damage in a short circuit. Which brings us to our second item which is reaction time or hysteresis. Fuses typically have a certain amount of time they operate in and honestly it's all over the place. Uh, one, one type of fuse will open very quickly, one type of fuse will not. This right here is an example of a fast acting fuse here and you can see that there's a small helical compression spring that's inside this fuse in the element. So what happens is, is as that fuse heats up and that link fails 
that spring is going to cause the circuit to open more rapidly than without that spring. An interesting addition here is, and this isn't a, of course, in a vehicle, but this is your typical primary cutout fusible link that's used on your transformer. And these are what fails when a squirrel decides to throw itself at your power line and short the primary. And you can see here, this is rated for 6 amps. And you can see just how small that conductor is inside of that. So due to this reaction time, you don't want to consider that the fuse itself is going to protect your radio exclusively during a short circuit type of situation. One way to have something that would be immediately acting is just a diode, of course. That brings us to our next issue, which is voltage drop. There's a certain amount of voltage drop that takes place in across a fuse and you know size matters there's a lot less voltage drop in this than there is in this and the last consideration we're going to talk about is, is always place the fuse as close as possible to the source to provide better protection for your circuit second is good grounds good grounds are extremely important equipment's going to find its path to ground and a lot of times it's going to find it through the highest resistance path if that lowest resistance path is not present. A bad ground can ruin your day. Make your ground connections with machine screws, star locks, and lock nuts. And tighten securely like you mean it. And remember, sheet metal screws and self-drilling screws do not make good grounds. Uh, grommet all your wire feed-throughs. Whenever you run a wire through a firewall or through a body panel or anything, you want to grommet that feed-through to protect that insulation of that battery-positive wire from shorting itself inside the vehicle. And another purpose of grommeting all of your openings is, is to prevent ingress of moisture and dust and also to prevent the ingress of carbon monoxide. Wire and equipment, which is your connectors, relays, or whatever you're using, sized for the load. You always want to oversize things rather than undersize things. That's just good engineering practice. Don't end up trying to pull 40 amps through something like this. Get yourself something like this. This is number 8 gauge. Number 8 gauge is good for 40 amps. If you have to, this is a number 4. A number 4 is another good cable to use to ensure that whatever load you have is going to be able to be carried by the conductor that you're installing. And connections matter. You want to make and use the best possible connections and minimize the amount of connections you have to make in all of your wiring because every connector you place in there does build resistance. When you're performing a hard install you should take advantage of whatever resources you have and use those resources effectively to perform the safest and most well-engineered install possible. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.